Welcome to the CSUN video learning module on scientific facts, laws, and theories. My name is Simon Garrett. In this video, we'll practice some of the ideas we've learned in class by answering questions about scientific facts, laws, and theories with the hope that these important ideas will become more firmly fixed in your mind. Before you start, you should review your lecture notes and the textbook on scientific facts, hypotheses, laws, and theories. Here is your first question. Identify each of the following as fact, law, hypothesis, or theory. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. The universe was created in a Big Bang. Force is the product of mass and acceleration. Genetic mutations cause changes in organisms. Pause the video here and think about each statement. Number one is a fact. It is a simple statement of an observation. Note that facts may depend on circumstances. Water doesn't boil at this temperature at altitude, for example. Although you may have heard of the Big Bang Theory, this second statement is actually a hypothesis, one possible explanation for the creation of the universe. It is probably the most complete hypothesis, and you might argue that it is almost a theory. But there are a few problems with the hypothesis that other ideas explain better. The third statement collects two facts together. The force required to move an object depends on its mass and also on the acceleration. A collection of related facts is a law. The last statement looks a little like a hypothesis, but many years of scientific research have shown us that mutations, changes in the genetic code carried by organisms, always lead to changes in the organism. So this is a fact, a simple statement of an observation. How did you do? Let's try another one. Identify each of the following as fact, law, hypothesis, or theory. Aliens brought humans to Earth. The movement of large slabs of rock causes earthquakes. Table salt is a hard, white solid. The properties of matter result because matter is composed of atoms. Pause the video here and think about it. Ready? The first statement is a hypothesis, because it is one possible way that humans developed on Earth. Actually, it's not a good hypothesis, since there is no evidence that it is true. The second statement is a theory. It offers an explanation of what causes earthquakes, and there is no evidence that contradicts the idea that the movement of the Earth's crust causes earthquakes. The theory explains many other aspects of geology, too. It contains a model or a conceptual framework that leads to a deeper understanding. The idea is called the theory of plate tectonics. The third statement is a fact. Note that you might argue that it is two related facts, one that salt is hard and the other that salt is white, but it is not a law. Remember, laws are more general statements that apply to a range of objects or circumstances. In the physical sciences, a law can often be written as a mathematical equation, and there is no way this statement can be written as an equation. The final statement is a theory, sometimes called the atom atomic theory of matter. The idea that matter is made up of atoms allows us to explain many aspects of the substances around us. There is no reliable evidence that matter is made of anything else but atoms. So far, so good. Try these four statements. Some diseases, like influenza or AIDS, are caused by infection by microscopic organisms. Earth's surface is mostly water. Tides affect the birth dates of babies. Global warming is due to human activity. Stop the video here and think about each one. Okay, the first statement is a theory. It's called the germ theory of disease. It gives us an understanding of why you might contract influenza 
and allows us to immediately understand how washing your hands or getting vaccinated work to reduce infection. There is no evidence that you can get influenza without being exposed to the influenza virus. The Earth's surface is about 70% water, a true statement. No concepts or understanding here, so it is a fact. Are more babies born during a full moon? Perhaps. This is a hypothesis, a plausible explanation of statistical data. Actually, statistics suggest there is no correlation between the number of babies born and the phases of the moon, so this is really a myth. The last one is tricky. This is certainly a hypothesis, one potential explanation of the proven rise in global temperature. And a hypothesis with a large burden of supporting evidence becomes a theory. Almost all climate scientists would call this a theory. Identify the following as scientific hypotheses, facts, laws, or theories. P equals N R T divided by V. The laws of motion are the same everywhere because gravity acts the same. Sound travels faster in water than in air. The voltage required to push current through a wire is proportional to its resistance. Pause the video to consider your answer. The first statement is a law, a collection of related facts. This one collects how pressure changes with the amount of gas, temperature, and volume. It is usually called the ideal gas law. We don't even need to know what the symbols mean. Laws in physical sciences can usually be written as equations. B is a theory. It gives us a conceptual understanding of why something is the way it is. Look for key words in theories like because or due to. The third statement is a fact. It simply states something that is true without any insights or explanations or concepts. So it cannot be a hypothesis or a theory. It is not a generalized statement of repeated observations and also cannot be expressed as an equation, so it is not a law. The last statement can be written as a mathematical equation. Voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. This is a law called Ohm's law. By now, you should be getting a little more confidence that you can spot a fact, hypothesis, law, or theory. Let's try a few more biological examples to make sure. Living organisms are made of cells and their products. Fact, hypothesis, law, or theory. Cells contain genetic material. All cells come from pre-existing cells. Organisms are able to grow and reproduce because cells divide. Stop the video here and formulate your answers. Actually, the first three answers are all laws. In the physical sciences, laws are often written as mathematical equations. But in the life sciences, laws are often written as statements and not equations. In these cases, answers A, B, and C are generalized statements, meaning they apply to all cellular organisms of repeated observations. They cannot they state something that is true, but without any explanation of how or why, so they cannot be theories as written. The last statement is a theory called the cell theory of biology. It is built on and incorporates statements like the first three. If you look carefully, you can see that D includes or implies the other three. Organisms grow because cells divide, so cells must contain genetic material, and new cells are formed from pre-existing ones. One last set to consider. Think about these four statements and decide whether they are facts, hypotheses, laws, or theories. Horoscopes, whether you are a Capricorn or Taurus, can predict your future. Genetic mutations allow some offspring to gradually adapt to their environment. Human beings will live to 150 years old in the future. God exists. Pause the video at this point.
The first statement is a hypothesis, one possible explanation of your future. Actually, this one is easy to discount. Horoscopes are pseudoscience, something that looks like science but does not follow the procedures or methods of science. The next statement explains how organisms can adapt to their environment, some thriving and some failing. This is called natural selection, and the theory is called evolution. Human beings will live to 150 years old in the future. It's not a fact because it's not based on an observation. We can't observe something in the future. It's not a hypothesis because there's no plausible explanations. It's not a law because there are no facts. And it's not a theory either for the same reason it's not a hypothesis. So this statement is odd. It's none of the things we're testing for. It's more like a personal belief. Wow. This, think about this one too. This is not a fact or law because it's not based on observations, not a hypothesis because it doesn't give any explanations, and it's not a theory because the statement cannot be supported by scientific methods. This is a statement of faith or belief. Note that we're not saying whether God exists or not, simply that his or her existence cannot be determined using science. Well done. So I hope that the previous 24 examples of facts, hypotheses, laws, and theories have provided you with more practice and helped you think about how to categorize these statements. Remember, facts are based on simple observations applying to one thing or type of thing and under a specific set of conditions and contain no concepts and no reason why. Laws are generalized observations, applying to a range of things under a range of conditions. They may collect related facts and may be expressed as mathematical equations. They may be written in words too. A hypothesis is an educated guess, a plausible explanation of an observation, meaning it includes a why something is the way it is or why something happens. But until it has been substantiated by much evidence and testing, it won't become a theory. Theories or explanations of, of observations that have been extensively tested and hold up to those tests. They offer some deeper understanding of a phenomenon, explaining how and why something happens at a fundamental level.